Welcome to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, Comcast is launching new data cap free internet starting at just $30 a month. We'll tell you what and when that will happen. And two US uh, House representatives are sending a lot of questions to Disney, Warner Bros. Discovery, and Fox about their new sports streaming service. They want to know what exactly is happening. They also want to know how this will impact the price of cable television out there. And lastly, um, before we get into all the stories, Plex now claims that the mark as the uh, free streaming service with the most live TV channels. Worldwide, now over 1,000 over 800 in the United States. We'll tell you what's happening here and a whole lot more here in a quick second. First, before we get into all the stories, I will pull a link to each story I talk about in the show notes and in the first pinned comment. You can find it there at corecarsnews.com. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Doing one or both lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here, so they recommend our videos to more people, helping us grow. With that said, let's dive into it. Comcast yesterday announced a new line of discounted phone internet um, uh, options. This comes alongside the Now brand, which they use for their discounted $20 TV service for its internet customers. Now with a Comcast Now internet service, you can get unlimited data internet, so no data caps, which Comcast's regular service does have, for just $30 a month um, for $100 down or $40 a month for $200 down. Now, 100 down is more than enough to do three 4K streams without problems and surf the web. 200 down will get you like six plus maybe uh, 4K streams plus surf the web. You know, for most people, I think if all you do is stream video and watch television that's, uh, and surf the web, check Facebook, pay bills online, that kind of stuff, it's probably all you need to be honest. Uh, a lot of people pay for gig services and hire that you probably aren't taking full advantage of if all you're doing is surfing the web, checking your webcam, um, at the front door and, and things like that. Overall, it's a really good deal here. Now, this is currently available in a handful of st uh, cities like Miami. Uh, Comcast said in the coming weeks, it'll be rolled out to all of its territory. So if you can get Comcast where you live, this will be available in the coming weeks. If you go to Comcast's website and look for the prepaid internet option, it, if it says now, it's there. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to wait a couple weeks until it shows up. It depends on where you live. They use your location to determine that. Uh, but again, I think the real selling point here is no data caps. And it really, I, I have to say, this has to be because of the success of 5G home internet. Comcast uh, and Spectrum and others have been losing a lot of internet customers re recently, just as Verizon, T-Mobile, and other um, internet providers are seeing a skyrocketing for their 5G home internet. Um, you also see uh, SpaceX, Starlink, and others taking a, a hit there too. Now, these come in cheaper than... Um, those services, similar speeds for similar price, but no data cap, which is really nice, really helps them stand out. And this is the kind of stuff that you see when competition comes in. I've talked for years about competition. Competition, historically, when it comes into internet services, data speeds go down and data, or data speeds go up and data caps go away. Um, and I suspect that's what's happening here. I think 5G home internet is really put a lot of uh, pain on them. T-Mobile added a lot and in a time where all major cable TV companies lost internet customers last year. So this for a while, core cutting 2.0 is the idea of canceling cable and switching to a other option for your home internet. 1.0 was television, now it's internet. But let me know, uh, does $30 a month from Comcast sound good? 200 or uh, $40 for 200 down? Would you sign up for this? Leave me a comment, let me know. Two U.S. House representatives have sent letters to Bob Iger, Fox, and Warbrush Discovery. In our next story up here, they're asking 19 questions and some very pointed questions that I'm betting that Disney doesn't want to answer along with Fox and Warbrush Discovery. Things like, what is the exact cost of your new streaming service? Something they have not announced yet um, for this. But they are raising concerns over the possibility that um, Disney... Warner Bros. Discovery and Fox are going to drive up the cost of television here through this service and other ones. Um, they want to know everything from how does these price com um, prices compare to prices uh, of the channels available through streaming services and cable. They're saying, hey, if you take your service, are you selling it less than what you're allowing other people to sell it for? 
They're looking at all kinds of stuff. Now they asked the, uh, Fox, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Disney to reply to all these questions by the end of April and send a copy to War, uh, Warner Brothers, or excuse me, from these companies to the Department of Justice. I'm a little... So Disney could no, uh, refuse to answer these questions, all or some of them. And then Congress would have to say, you know, are we going to uh, basically compel them to answer it? That gets a little bit tricky here. Um, often you get these uh, letters where companies are demanded to answer questions and they kind of half answer it. Because honestly, some of this information is very proprietary and they probably don't want their competitors to know this information, including pricing. They want to make sure they don't have leaking that early. I don't mind this investigation. I find it very interesting, though, how this will go forward. I think it's a good idea to always look at, make sure we maintain competition, as we just talked about in the previous um, story. Competition's good. I want competition. I want as many options. Um, so we'll see how Disney responds to this. I'm very interested to in see what stakes Fox, Disney, and Warner Bros. Discovery do. Will there be a split? Will these three companies all do a joint united front on this investigation? Or... Will there be some splintering and some people answer questions that others are not willing to? We'll have to keep a very close eye on this. But there are a lot of things out there, including price fixing rules. Um, and, you know, that could be one angle the DOJ says, hey, three competitors have all banded together to launch their own service. Are they price fixing? I think that one's a little, I think there's other ways to do this. But there's definitely a lot of reasons for the Department of Justice and Congress to pay close attention to this. So let me know, do you think this should be investigated or should not be investigated? Leave me a question, let me know. All right, Plex, um, the free ad support streaming service, yesterday announced that they've now topped over 1,100 channels. Now this um, includes worldwide, so not all those channels are available in the United States. An interesting thing they disclose here, according to this, um, worldwide there are more than 963 channels. Plex are uh, 1,963 channels. Plex currently offers um, uh, 847 of those. There are 1,900 some free channels streaming on, online. Now, those aren't all on one service. You got so many you probably never even heard of. Small independent streaming channels that just launch tiny little independent content. There are you know hundreds and hundreds of stuff on Plex, Pluto TV, Tubi and others out there. Now in the United States, Plex says they offer 847 of those channels. Worldwide, over 1,100 of those channels. Plex is available in different countries. Different countries have different content due to licensing rules. Very interesting to see how much content's really there. Have you tried out these free services? If you have not, I think you're gonna be surprised how much content is there and the quality of it. All right, a cable TV lobby group in our next story is asking the FCC to make changes to net neutrality. Now, ACA Connects, which is represents medium and small um, cable TV companies across the country, 500 of them. It's kind of amazing to know there's 500 media companies that fall into that. But in a statement sent to the FCC yesterday, they're asking for changes to be made to net neutrality proposal to make them a little bit more favorable. And more importantly, they're asking the FCC not for at least six months to put these new rules in effect after they're voted on. We'll have to see how this all plays out, but the FCC so far seems pretty determined to keep it the way it is. These small cable TV companies are worried about some of the regulatory framework terms related to this, knowing exactly what they need to do and what they don't need to do with this net neutrality. There's some confusions what they're arguing. We'll see how this plays out, but this also comes as the um, Internet Television Association, which represents larger cable TV companies, has vowed to fight net neutrality in court if it's passed. AT&T and other companies have been very vocal in their concern, we'll call it, over these net neutrality rules. We'll see how this plays out, but more cable TV companies are coming out with concern over net neutrality and the way it's being implemented. And in our next story up, Friendly TV is adding four new premium add-ons with a and &E Networks. Now this will allow you to subscribe to additional content through Friendly TV, have it right in the Friendly TV app. This includes giving access to a Lifetime Movie Club, History Vault, a and &E Crime, and Great America Pure Flix. Now these are independent streaming services. You can now bundle into Friendly TV and pay them directly and have all the content in one app like you do with Amazon's channels, the Roku channel, and other places that allow you to subscribe to the content and watch it all through their one app. So you're not jumping between three or four apps to watch all the content there. 
Keep a close eye on that. Really nice lineup of um, content coming up friendly. Let me know. Are you a friendly subscriber? Do you like it? Let me know. All right, question of the day. If you have a question for me, leave a comment down below. Start off with something like a question for Luke, so I know it's something you want me to answer. Today's question says, Luke, how long do you think Max will continue to have its BR Sports free? Now, this is the free streaming service, or this is the free add-on for now that gives you TNT, TBS, and True TV sports programs streaming through Max. It was a really nice package for March Madness, for example. Now, originally, it was supposed to become a paid service, um, and that's what they ask here. Wondering if the new Disney, Fox, Warner Brothers Discovery streaming service will affect their plan to still charge $10 a month. So last year when this was announced, they announced uh, right before March Madness, they would be charging about 10 bucks a month for this package. There will be an add-on to um, Max, and Max subscribers could watch, like I said, live feed of sporting events from TNT, TBS, and True TV. Now that was put on hold. Um, and shortly thereafter, we found out that they were launching a joint partnership with Disney Fox to offer six, 14, 16 some channels, all live sports channels, including TNT, TV, TBS, for example, along with local Fox, C, um, FS1, ESPN, and the like. So what's happening here? Now, it would not surprise me at all that um, Warner Bros. Discovery, to avoid mass confusion and issues, just says, hey, well, if we're going to have this new bundle, and this new bundle will be offered through Max. You will be able to watch ESPN and FS1 through this new bundle on your Max app. Maybe we don't want to launch this BR Sports. For now, they're just saying some type of technical, they kind of hinted at issue, so having them keep it for free right now on Max. I don't know. Now, it would not surprise me, like I said, if they just decide this BR bundle where it's just TNT, TBS, and True TV isn't worth it. And honestly, why would you pay for that when probably for a little bit more money, you can get all the ESPNs, um, all the FS1s and the like included with it. We'll have to wait and see, but I do believe that probably paid, played some part in their marketing strategy of it going forward. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe. Have a fantastic day, everybody.